This video is about uh, reviewing the Harbor Freight pipe threader. Uh, I bought it because I have one project I need to do and I don't need to be spending thousands of dollars on a pipe threader just to do this one project. And it came with a few pieces. Uh, the pipe threader, of course, uh, which I'll show you here in a minute. It came with this piece here to put on the pipe to help hold the pipe threader while you're using the pipe threader. And I tried doing it without using this, and it's hard to hold the pipe threader. I mean, it's fairly straightforward and simple. I mean, you just put it on the pipe, tighten it down like any vice. And we're being having the job held in a harbor freight vise that's mounted on a stand that actually has the regular jaws for a vise but it also has a piece to hold pipe now here's the harbor freight uh pipe threader i mean fairly straightforward you just go ahead and slide it on the uh pipe here it has a collar to help keep you straight now what i do is i have some cutting oil that i got from my magnetic drill and what i've been doing is i've been coating the pipe that, where i'm going to cut it with the cutting oil i figure the oil at the very least is going to help it can't hurt but you just put it on here and then this clamp here you just go ahead and slide it in the hole of the pipe threader you don't want to stick it too far out because the pipe threader is going to work towards the camera so you want to basically what i've been doing is i've been putting the uh, clamp on so the end of the rod is flush or close to being flush with the tool or the pipe threader and then I just go ahead and I clamp it down at that point as tight as I can. <clears throat> and one thing about this I have noticed now, I've never used any other pipe threader. But I have seen other people use pipe threaders. And the professional grade ones, they just put the pipe in there and go to town. Well... I've discovered with this one here, what you have to do is, I'm going to show you here in a minute, you run it in until it starts binding, and then you stop, back it out, and keep just going in and out with it. I'm going to show you that here in a second, because I'm already plugged into the extension cord. Now, one thing I have noticed to get it started sometimes, not all the time, I have to put my hand against here, against this flat part and push just to get the threads to start. And I mean, it with gloves on, it don't bother me that much. I'm not pushing real hard, just enough to get it started. Okay, I'm gonna fire the machine up and we're gonna go ahead and see if it works without me putting any pressure there. And there is a button for your thumb you have to push in before pulling the trigger, otherwise it won't turn on. Now you heard how it was binding and getting harder and harder and harder. If I keep going, I'm just gonna burn it up. So what I do is I just keep going back and forth, like I said. Just the way I look at it, it's the same uh, method you use for when you're tapping a hole for a bowl or, or a nut or something like that, you just keep working back and forth. Now I do not recommend this tool for a person that's going to be doing a lot of pipe threading but for somebody like me that's going to just be doing a single job or something like that three hundred dollars is a whole lot cheaper than six thousand dollars so as long as you just keep going back and forth back and forth back and forth until you get it threaded i think you'll be fine uh this is probably like the 10th 12th piece that i've threaded and the tool is still working but that's because I'm not just making it just burn up. I am just keep working back and forth. So go ahead and uh, hit that bell button and subscribe to the channel. And 
let other people know that we're out here. We're trying to give you as much information as we can and trying to help everybody that we can. All right. Have a better day.